Hello, my name is Edwin. Today, I want to introduce a research paper about Bayesian time varying coefficient models with applications to marketing mixed models. The research is done by me, Jishi, and Afina during our work in marketing data science at Uber. So the agenda will be broken down into four parts, introduction, model overview, performance, and resources. Now, to start with, let's try to understand the role of marketing mix model, which is usually called MMM. In Uber marketing, we need to make decisions constantly on how we should allocate our budget in advertising. The budget size can be as high as 100 million of dollars, and we need similar planning process over multiple lines of business, such as Uber Rise, Drive, Eats, and Uber Freight. In view of that, we need a systematic way to budget planning. And the crucial part of this is to have a holistic measurement framework to measure and compare marketing effectiveness across channels fairly. Such measurement needs to be data-driven, generalizable, interpretable, and scalable. Traditionally, MMM is playing such a role for this holistic measurement. So MMM is not something new. It was advocated as early as 1970s. A classical MMM first aggregates historic sales and other variables as time series. Then it expressed the sales as a function of advertising variables and other control variables like product price, weather and competition, et cetera. Then metrics such as return on advertising spend an optimal budget plan can be derived from this approach. So there are pros and cons for MMM. On the pro side, um, MMM has no dependency on granular data such as user level and click level information. This is increasingly important as the mobile privacy becomes a major concern in the industry. MMM also provides great interpretability as a parametric model. As a time series model, MMM comes naturally with the capability to forecast. On the con side, people see MMM has limitations such as endogenous regressor like search channel span, multi coronality problem uh, in regressors, high dimensionality in regression. And many of these claims are tied to the challenge of whether the insights extract from the model indicate causality or just correlation. That actually sparks our motivation. So most of the criticism we saw about MMM can be addressed by experimentation. However, experimentation is expensive and itself has other disadvantages that MMM does not have, such as the lack of forecastability, generalizable cost curves, Failed failure to extract insights for organic sales and interaction effects of channel. So we propose a new solution of MMM, which can fully capture all information provided by experimentation with the help of time varying coefficients and Bayesian framework without losing generality under the MMM framework. So in our BTBC approach, Instead of modeling the response directly, we start with the log of response. This way, after the uh, anti-log transformation, we can retrieve a multiplicative model. Anyway, the predictive equation can be decomposed into trend, seasonality, and regression. The regression component contains a time varying coefficient as shown on the right-hand side. Notice that we can also write trend and seasonality into a similar regression framework so that we can leverage the time varying coefficient method to model trend and seasonality as well. Now, the way we model time varying coefficients is to leverage kernel's moving techniques. We express a coefficient as a weighted sum of latent variables. Each latent variable can be viewed as a knot 
which has a pair of values. The value we need to estimate for coefficient calculation and the value in the time dimension to indicate where this knot is actually placed. Then the weight is determined by a kind of function which takes entries of the time point of the coefficient and the knot. Notice that in this setup, we have to pick a hyperparameter J, which stands for the total number of knots. For the choices of kernel, in our paper, we propose two types of kernel. We use triangular kernel to model level and seasonality. We use the Gaussian kernel to model the rest of the regression coefficients. Notice that in the Gaussian kernel, we have the extra hyperparameter row that we need to tune. So back to the hyperparameters tuning, to tune J and rho, we notice that these two hyperparameters are controlling the condition of overfitting and underfitting, which basically means the bias and variance trade-off. And visualization can be found on the right-hand side that illustrates how J and rho work in the coefficient curve fitting under different values. So the best way to optimize J and rho is to minimize the out-of-sample prediction errors, which can be collected by the backtest. Here we propose an expanding window backtest with multiple streets to tune J and rho. In BTVC, we introduce additional likelihood function criteria in sampling where we can introduce optional time point priors supplied by the users besides the response data likelihood. The time point priors can be information we extract from A-B tests. This way, we can incorporate information from all experiments conduct, which is, main, which is also the main advantage of using BTVC over Moving on to the performance section, we want to know how close we can recover the truth coefficient values. So we conduct a simulation study where trend and other coefficients of the current regression follows random walk. Among these 100 simulations, we compare against two other popular time varying coefficient methods BSTS and TV RAN. Our model demonstrates a significant advantage from the other two models. Then we also find using some informative time point priors can further improve the performance in terms of estimate and pinball loss. Because BTVC is a forecast model, we are also curious on how it performs in terms of forecasting accuracy. So we compare BTVC against other popular models in the community, such as Profit and Serima. We find BTVC as a forecast model also outperforms these standard methods in our internal data. The metric used here is as made with a 28 days forecast horizon. Moving on to the resources part, BTVC is implemented under an open source manner where we leverage Pyro to perform posterior sampling using stochastic variational inference. To make the model scalable and extensible, we implement BTVC in an object-oriented design, which finally sits into another open source package called Orbit. To conclude, traditional marketing mixed models struggle with endogenous variables, multi-corinarity, and correlation versus causality challenge. Bayesian time varying coefficient model solves these problems by introducing a natural way to integrate experimentation results through Bayesian framework and time varying coefficients. Unlike typical common filter models, BTVC provides flexibility for users to customize likelihood functions and priors. Besides, both simulation and real case studies show BTVC has better performance in estimating regression coefficients and forecast accuracy. The model is open source under the Python package orbit, 
using stochastic variational inference in Pyro to perform posterior sampling. That's all for my presentation of the paper. I want to say thank you to Bert Bayer, Kim Larson, and Matt Bay for their advice and support for this project. I also want to thank marketing DS and ad tech engineers and PMs who contribute to this project. Lastly, we are hiring. If you're interested or if you have any questions and comments about the paper, feel free to reach out. And please take good care of yourself in this pandemic period.